Hi, my name is Jose Miguel Parrela, and I'm an open source specialist with Microsoft in Redmond, Washington. Today we're going to talk about how we can um, use Azure virtual machines for Ruby-based applications uh, on top of our infrastructure as a service uh, solution for the cloud. So the first thing that we're going to do is to go to virtual machines in my uh, Windows Azure management portal and click on images. So I have several images here. If I'm already using um, uh, a hypervisor, say Hyper-V or VMware or KVM or any others, I can export the disk and I can upload it to uh, Azure where I can run uh, Windows, Linux, uh, uh, virtual machines and I can uh, uh, browse BM Depot which is a service uh, offered by the Microsoft Open Technologies where the community can actually upload uh, different types of, uh, of uh, Linux based images for others to use and consume um, on, on Windows Azure. So here I can just uh, browse to Ruby and there will be several um, uh, Ubuntu based images for the Ruby stack. I will just choose the 1.9.31 which is the uh, latest 1.9 version av available. As you can see, these images are not published by Microsoft. In this case, it's a partner called Bitnami, and uh, it's a 30 gigabyte image. Uh, on my next page, I, I just have to choose which uh, Azure region I want to deploy this uh, image, in which case I'll choose uh, East US, and uh, which storage account I will use for that. Uh, once I click on, on uh, Complete, I will uh, start copying this image from BM Depot and it will be uh, available for deployment on Windows Azure. So this process takes uh, some minutes since it's going to copy 30 gigabytes over the internet. I already have the image copied right here. Uh, it is in uh, pending registration status so all I, all I need to do is to click on it and, uh, and then go in the bottom to the register uh, action it will ask for a name and it will uh, set a URL for it. Uh, defaults are just right, so I'll just click complete and it will register the image for usage as an Azure uh, VM. So I have uh, several hundreds of images available on VM Depot, uh, a handful of, Im of images related to Ruby and Ruby based applications that I can uh, choose from. And once the image has been registered for use here in, uh, uh, on Azure, I don't have to repeat the process anymore. I can just start creating as many instances, uh, which are called VM instances, as I need for uh, for my work. So uh, today we're going to set up this uh, uh, instance with the image that I get from the end depot, and on top of that, I will create a Rails application um, that I that will be able uh, available for uh, um, a public access from my browser. So now that the image has been uh, registered, I just go to Instances and then I choose New. Virtual Machine is already selected because it uh, correctly guesses that, that it is what I'm trying to do. And I can create from Gallery. As you can see, there are several uh, Microsoft published images here, not only for uh, Windows, but also for Ubuntu, CentOS, SUSE, and OpenSUSE. In this case, I just want to go to my images and choose my Ruby stack uh, image that already registered. I will put a name on it, so let's say PR Ruby 01. I can choose uh, the size of the image that I want to run, small is okay. And then there's a username uh, that needs to be set up. It is by default a sure user. And I can upload an SSH key for authentication or I can provide a password uh, which is what I'm going to do here just for simplicity. So I can use uh, existing cloud services. So cloud services are uh, groups of uh, Azure services that I uh, put together for ease of administration and uh, particularly for affinity uh, in terms of geographical availability. In this case, I will create a new one. Uh, as you can see, it's called the same as the uh, virtual machine uh, uh, name that I just set up. Uh, I'm also choosing East US because that's where the image is. And if I had several resources, I can create an availability set and uh, group them together um, in order to have redundancy and other uh, geo-based uh, 
um, solutions. So endpoints, I'm going to leave it like that just to illustrate what, what needs to be done uh, afterwards. You can see that SSH is uh, enabled by default. So this is just a way to open the port in the firewall so you can uh, get into the VM afterwards. So we'll start creating the VM and then it will uh, boot it up. As I mentioned, uh, the purpose of this uh, brief tutorial is to go through the creation of a VM depot based uh, Ruby uh, instance and then uh, setting up a brief uh, uh, application so you can um, see how web development will look like uh, on top of uh, Azure for those of you that use Ruby for development. Once my Ruby VM is uh, running on Azure, I can just go ahead and use a standard SSH client for Windows uh, to log in. So I'll just type in the name of my VM. It will ask for credentials, which I already set up when I uh, instantiated the VM and I have logged in uh, into this Ubuntu VM with the Bitnami Ruby stack uh, 1.9.3 right here. I'll just just go ahead and uh, escalate to root and then I'll see into stack, which is uh, the, full, the full Ruby stack that I can start uh, using uh, right ahead. I'll uh, go into the Ruby console and I'll see into projects which uh, already has some some projects right there. I'll delete this one. I'll start from scratch, and uh, I'll create a new Rails app using standard uh, Ruby tools. In this case, I'll re I'll use the Rails command. It will create a folder with some uh, with some files, and after that, I'll create a scaffold for a sample blog post application, and then I'll create a sample database file using uh, SQLite, which is the uh, standard development uh, uh, tool that comes right here so I'll just see into this uh, um, a folder and one thing is that uh, the next step uh, requires a JavaScript execution environment so if you don't have it you can use apt and install uh, node.js in this case it's important to highlight if you go to the uh, sources file on um, on, on this Ubuntu system that uh, Ubuntu is using the uh, Azure archives so it's a, it's gonna be a um, you know pretty fast process to install uh, packages and to upgrade the system um, if you if you have the need so I'll just uh, go ahead and generate a new scaffold it's gonna have a name it's gonna have a title and it's gonna have some content um, so after it creates uh, the necessary files I'll just create the SQLite database using Rake and I'm just gonna make sure because uh, I'm gonna deploy this on Apache using Passenger and it runs with a specific user that does not, it's not root and it does not have permissions for the DB file and for the DB directory where this file is uh, um, included so right now it's, uh, it's all root so I will change the group owner and the user uh, that the Bitnami Ruby stack uses is daemon. So I'll change the group for the DB folder and I'll, ch I'll change the group for the SQL byte file and I'll add write permissions on the folder and the, um, the SQL like file. So right now I'm pretty much uh, done. I will just make sure that the configuration file of the stack for Apache uh, contains the necessary uh, passenger um, line. So I'll just search for passenger right here and right at the end I've added this virtual host uh, section where I am uh, pointing to my project which is called blog app and I'm, uh, I'm also adding here a uh, mention to my Rails environment which is development because I want to use the SQL Lite database that I just created and since I don't have any other virtual host I can just use a sample server name and it will get uh, uh, caught by uh, by Apache. So right now, I can use uh, the control script that the Vietnam stack has in order to stop and make sure that everything is stopped. So Apache uh, readies and and all the other components of the stack are, are stopped, and then start the components. And uh, m meanwhile, I'll just check uh, here in the Azure portal that there is an endpoint for HTTP which is uh, TCP port 80, uh, just to make sure that I can access the app after, uh, after it boots. So it, it is in fact created. Uh, also in this, in this uh, 
um, uh, portal, I can take a look at the dashboard and take a look at you know uh, the resources that I'm using and the rest of the variables for this um, for this particular VM. And now that Apache has started, I can just go ahead and access uh, the app using my browser. And if I go to posts, then I can create a new post. Uh, let's say Azure open source rocks on Azure. This is for more. And then create post. And now it's being created. I can go back and I can see it. And I can also uh, go to my project. I go to DB, access the SQLite database, and uh, see the posts that are being created there. Now, if I'm not using the Bitnami Ruby stack, uh, if I have my own, then I can just go ahead and choose from a different uh, uh, set of uh, virtual machines from the gallery. So we have Ubuntu, CentOS, um, uh, SUSE and OpenSUSE, or I can just go to BN Depot and search for more. So this one, for example, is a 2.0 uh, Ruby stack that I can also deploy. Or if I'm uh, using my own uh, um, hypervisor infrastructure, I can use the uh, virtual disks and I can upload them to Windows Azure and run them on Windows Azure with some uh, preparation. Now, next steps would be to go to the uh, Windows Azure uh, Ruby Developer Center. I can download the Azure SDK, uh, which is uh, not only for Windows, I can download the command line tools for Linux and Mac as well. Uh, it's open source available on GitHub. And uh, I can start, since I've just started creating my web application, I can start consuming other Azure services such as uh, blobs, tables, and also messaging, service bus, queues, and um, any other of the REST-based solutions that are available on Azure. So I can, I can search the docs and I can uh, browse uh, tutorials and several resources that are available for free on windowsazure.com, the Ruby Developer Center, and I can create each one of the services I need, say databases or storage or tables or queues or uh, bus-based uh, applications and consume them from Ruby. So hopefully this has been a, a useful uh, a short video on how to uh, create and deploy your first app, uh, Ruby app on Azure uh, by leveraging the existing open source uh, features of this platform. Thanks so much for your time and please let us know on uh, Twitter at open at Microsoft for any more comments or feedback. Thank you.